Welcome to this overview of the fiscal year 2022 CAP H-1B process presented by Chin and Curtis LLP, a WR immigration partner firm. Before we begin, please note that this is a general overview of the CAP H-1B process only and is not intended to be legal advice specific to your situation. Please consult your Chin and Curtis attorney if you have specific questions about your case. For those of you experiencing the CAP H-1B process for the first time, here is a basic overview of the H-1B visa category. There are three basic components to an H-1B. First, the job has to be one that requires at least a bachelor's degree in a specific field. For example, for a software engineer position, the minimum requirement may have to be at least a bachelor's degree in computer science or a related field. Second, for you, the employee, to qualify for H-1B sponsorship, you have to have the same educational background that the job requires. Third, the sponsoring company has to comply with Department of Labor regulations. There are two wage requirements which, which must be met. The prevailing wage, which is set by the Department of Labor, and the actual wage, which is what other employees at the sponsoring company in similar roles and at the same location are being paid. The wage is the same for the metropolitan area in which the job is located. So, for example, if you are based in Cambridge, Massachusetts, the wage would be for the greater Boston area. What do we mean when we say CAP H-1B? There is a numeric cap on the number of new H-1B visas available per fiscal year. This number is set by Congress. There are 85,000 H-1B visa slots available each fiscal year, 20,000 of which are reserved for individuals who have a U.S. master's degree or higher. In recent years, demand has exceeded the number of new H-1B visa slots, so USCIS has run a random lottery to choose which cases are eligible for adjudication. As with previous years, we expect there will be a lottery in 2021. Last year, USCIS introduced a new system in which the H-1B lottery is run through an online pre-registration system. So how does the lottery pre-registration system work? The process will be the same as it was last year. The government will open the pre-registration system from March 9th to March 25th. During this time, your employer will be able to register any individuals they plan to sponsor for a CAP H-1B. Importantly, any duplicate registrations for the same individual will be automatically disqualified. This means your employer will be registering you for the lottery and you should not try to register yourself. Following the registration period, the government will then run the lottery and notify employers electronically of cases selected. Chin and Curtis will then work with your employer to notify you of selection. If your case is selected, there will then be a 90-day window for your employer to file the full H-1B petition on your behalf. So, if your case is selected, the next step will be to prepare the CAP H-1B petition filing. This includes co collecting any updated documentation from you, such as pay statements. We will file the petition with the government and provide updates regarding the receipt notice, if there's a request for evidence, and of course, final outcome of the case. We do not know yet if premium processing or two-week expedited service will be available for cases this year. In past years, the government has sometimes suspended this service. We will let you know if this suspension happens again. An H-1B petition can be filed in one of two ways. The first method is to file with a request for change of status. This means we are requesting that the H-1B status become effective automatically as of October 1st, 2021, if your petition is approved by that time. If your CAP H-1B petition is approved after October 1st, you would automatically enter H-1B status as of the date the petition is approved. So for example, if you are in F-1 status and your CAP H-1B petition is approved prior to October 1st, 
On October 1st, you would wake up having automatically entered H-1B status in USCIS's systems without having to take any action on your part. Change of status is critical for individuals in F-1 status who need CAP-GAP work authorization protection, which we'll discuss in more detail on the next slide. Now, in order to be eligible for change of status, you must be physically present in the U.S. when the CAP H-1B petition is filed. And in general, you may not travel internationally until after October 1st. Now, there are nuances to this rule, so if you have a question specific to your situation, please contact your Chin and Curtis attorney. The second possible method is called consular notification. This means that the company is asking its H-1B petition be approved, but not activated until you take further steps. In order to activate your H-1B status, once your petition has been approved, you would need to travel internationally, apply for and obtain an H-1B visa stamp at a U.S. consular post, and then re-enter the U.S. using your new H-1B visa. Uh, with that set of notes, citizens of Canada are visa exempt and instead may apply directly for re-entry in H-1B status at the border or through pre-flight -pre inspection. Consular notification might be necessary if you need to travel abroad while the CAP H-1B petition is pending. In this situation, it is critical that you have another underlying status that will bring you to at least October 1st or later pending approval of the petition. Consular notification is also required if you will be outside the U.S. at the time the CAP H-1B petition is filed. Your Chin and Curtis attorney and employer will coordinate with you to determine the best strategy for your situation and to assess any other potential risks related to international travel. So previously we mentioned cap gap for individuals in F1 status. So let's talk more about who needs cap gap protection and how you can obtain it. You would need cap gap if your F1 OPT or STEM work authorization expires after April 1st, 2021, but before September 30th, 2021. The cap gap provision allows you to automatically bridge the gap between your F1 work authorization expiration and October 1st. If you are selected in the lottery, once your CAP H-1B petition has been filed, you would provide the receipt notice to your school so that they may issue you an updated Form I-20. You do not need to do a separate filing with the government for this benefit. Now, it's important to note that CAP gap is only valid through September 30th, 2021. So, if your CAP H-1B petition has not yet been approved by then, you may still experience a gap in work authorization. Your Chin and Curtis attorney will coordinate with your employer if you are at risk for this situation. And finally, let's talk about what happens if your case is not selected in the lottery. If your case is not selected in the lottery, it's important to keep in mind that this does not mean your case was denied or refused, and it should not have any impact on eligibility for future U.S. immigration matters. For example, your employer may opt to sponsor you again next year for the CAP H-1B lottery. If this year is your last chance to obtain a CAP H-1B, for example, if your F-1 student work authorization expires this year and you do not have any other options, we will work with you and your employer on next steps. Thank you for joining us. We hope this overview has been helpful to guide you through the basic steps of the process, and we look forward to working with you. Thank you.